there, Kai Kaya, and welcome back to another episode of Kegel Competition Chronicles. Today, I'm taking you through my final reflections on the Kegel Monthly Playground Competition, Season 4, Episode 8, where we tackle the challenge of predicting whether a mushroom is poisonous or edible. I am excited to walk you through my approach, the lessons learned, and dive into the top solution that took the leaderboard by storm. Let's start with my approach to the competition. After creating the baseline model from the previous video, the first huddle I tackled was dealing with a column that had significantly high amount of missing values. Rather than letting these parts column weigh down my model's performance, I made a decision to drop them entirely. When it came to categorical columns with missing values, I labeled them as missing to maintain the data's integrity. For the values that appeared in less than 1% of the data, I grouped them under rare. It was all about ensuring that the model didn't get tipped over by noise or rare events. Next, I built two main entries for the competition. The first was focused on fine-tuning XGBoost using Optuna. I spent a considerable amount of time tweaking the parameters such as the learning rate, maximum depth, to squeeze out every bit of the performance. I'm a big fan of XGBoost's flexibility and I aimed for that sweet spot where the model really shined. For my second entry, I focused on voting algorithm. I combined cat boost, light GDM, random forest, and gradient boosting, using soft voting to average their predictions. The idea here was leveraging the strength of each model and hoping that the combined wisdom would somehow outperform any single one. Admittedly, I was hoping to fine tune each one of these models, but time constraint led me to focus on just two of them. Now, let's talk about the solution that led the leaderboard. The first place solution. The winner gathered a zoo of models, 72 out of fold arrays to be exact. The competitor behind the solution used diverse collection of models, experimented with various hyperparameters, and meticulously fine-tuned the ensembling strategy. They heavily leveraged auto on along with methods like ridge regression and gradient boosting decision tree for the ensembling. A key takeaway from their model was their focus on the model diversity and carefully monitoring cross-validation scores, which helped them achieve this robust model. Second place solution by Sujal, this solution focused on stacking and weighted average with rich regression. Their model arsenal included a mix of autogulon, XGBoost, light GBM, CatBoost, histogram-based gradient boosting models. They skillfully combined models into an ensemble and gave way to the best performing one, leading to highly competitive score. The third place solution was the first place winner in Auto ML Grand Prix. Their approach used Auto Neuron as their main tool and distributed computing to maximize performance. The solution involved using 16 full cross validation and a custom portfolio of models derived from TAM Repo 2024. The team ran Auto Neuron in both default and custom modes across clone clusters of 1000 CPUs and AWS instance. They also introduced post hoc ensembling, manually tweaking and combining models output to push their score higher. Despite the heavy reliance on auto Neuron, they fine-tuned the models and optimized the ensemble to achieve strong finish in the competition. Sixth place solution by Tiller. They took this similar approach with massive ensembling of 25 models including Llama Tabular Neural Network, Auto Neuron, various factorization machines, they treated all the variables as categorical across different models, which seemed to resonate well with the data, delivering a robust prediction. And finally, the eighth place solution by Jacqueline. This competitor leaned heavily on autoculon, but with an interesting twist. They identified the noise in data, like numerical values and strange words, in categorical features that weren't present in test set. They cleaned up these anomalies, allowing the autoculon to handle the rest producing a 64 stat models in final run. So what's the takeaway? Well, for one, it is clear that ensembling and fine tuning are incredibly powerful techniques when used effectively. However, as we saw with the winning solutions, using the right tools can make the world of difference, whether it's leveraging distributed computing or meticulously cleaning up the data. These little details can push the models from good to great. Well, that's all for today. And I hope you find this deep dive into my approach and the winning solutions as insightful as I did. I'll see you in the next video.